Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You like my new wig? <laughs> I figured I would uh, give the straight front bangs a break and do the swoop bangs and the little high bun. Hope you like it. Still playing around with it. It has like a little braid over here. It's pretty cool. So this is uh, my new YouTube wig. I'm still gonna use the other one too. I'll interchange and see how I feel, feel about the whole thing. But in any case, welcome. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about where to find men of means when freestyling. This video is going to deal with daytime freestyling, and I'll do another one on nighttime freestyling, but keep in mind that daytime is where you're going to find better long-term clients better long-term results why because these men are gonna feel like they met you by coincidence by chance which will bond them to you faster on like at nighttime when they too are on the prowl and they also assume that you are as well so it's like oh she was looking for this blah blah, blah yada 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 versus oh my god look at this beautiful girl I met by chance at Best Buy or whatever. So it's a different dynamics, but um, dynamic, but we're gonna do both because at the end of the day, we are here. So <laughs> we need to make money, you know, both ways. Like it's like having a toolkit. When you have a problem, the more tools you have in your kit, the better chance you have at fixing the problem and the more ways you have to fix the problem. And right now we'll say our problem that we're looking for a solution for is streams of income. So you want to be able to do both, but I'm just saying daytime will yield you long-term results. However, it requires patience because you've heard the saying, you know, nothing good comes easy or something like that. So you will have to put in time, which is why you can also leverage your short-term guys for like the right now money. Long-term guys is for like the forever money that keeps giving, but it takes a little bit of time to get to it. But anyway, so I will also do another video on how to qualify these men, as in how to tell if he's rich, willing, and able to spend on you. So stay tuned for that. Um, I decided to dive more into this topic of freestyling because I've gotten several emails from the ladies asking me to do so, and also because the online venues for advertising seem to be unstable, they're shaky, you know, because of FOSTA-SESTA and other recent laws and the lobbyists that are trying to just, you know, fuck up our vibe. <laughs> Basically... They don't want women to capitalize on their looks online, so we're going to outsmart them. I'm looking at my notes here. Okay, so before I jump into the show, I want to first ask you to reprogram your mindset. Just a little bit when it comes to freestyling. Everything is mental and starts up here. Remember that. I'm sure you or someone you know has fumbled a bag because they didn't have their mindset in order. So let's not make that same mistake here. Most of us heels and dancers and adult entertainers are so used to getting quick money right away that we tend to rush this process of seduction and end up fumbling the bag. I mean, I've done it before. I quickly salvaged it, but it took more work than it would have if I had just been patient. So just keep that in mind. When it comes to the long-term plays, you want these guys to actually think that they're your boyfriends. If you need a timeline, the timeline 
is four to six weeks before you get your first big payout. And by big payout, I mean racks on racks on racks. So keep that in mind. Don't rush the process. These four to six weeks, you're going to be going out with them. You're going to be talking to them on the phone, you know, texting them and trying to build that bond with them. So that way, when you set up yourself for the, you don't, you wouldn't even have to ask, especially if you qualify them in the beginning. But if they feel like they're your man, it's easier for them to drop money on you. No problem. There's a reason why guys that are in, you know, unhappy marriages still give their wives the checkbook. <laughs> it's because that's their wife. So, or their girlfriend, you know, so you, that's what you need to be thinking. You want this person to feel like you like them, you want them and you're their girlfriend or you want to be their girlfriend. So, but this doesn't mean that you're going to be seeing them every week or whatever for the four to six weeks. Most of your seduction is going to be done via phone anyway, texting, calling, whatever. And, you know, just little baby voice messages or like a sexy picture, but nothing crazy, like no news or anything. But, you know, hey, you know, I'm just heading out to the mall or even though you're not going anywhere or hey, just blah, blah, blah. Just sending him photos would give him that bond to you. Um, and this is why you should be dating as many leads as possible. So that way, when you start receiving your payout, it's going to be a fucking waterfall just raining down on you. Think of it the same way as you would with your clients. You want as many regulars as possible so that way you can cash out. Also, it helps you not to be a pick me <laughs> and invest all your energy and emotions into one guy. I mean, I'm sure we've all been there where, you know, we meet a guy that we think is the one. <sighs> this bang is doing something else. I'm going to have to. There we go. That one weird part in the middle is annoying the hell out of me. <laughs> yes, I'm vain, folks. I'm vain. Ugh, it's going to bug the shit out of me all night. Here we go. That's the best I can do right now. I'm going to have to like probably blow dry this thing to make it all straight. But anyways, we've all been guilty of meeting the, the whale or the one and we're like, oh my God, this is it. And then we try to hang on to it so tight. We ignore everything else. We stop dating. We stop living our lives because we want to get this one whale and then we end up suffocating it and he runs the other way. So you want to be dating as many people as possible. Even when you find your guy, you still need to have some in your back pocket. Think of it the same way as being a hero. But they're your boyfriends. Just, just think of it as having many boyfriends. Okay, let's see here. What next? And also, remember, there will be no sex of any kind, including kissing, until you get your payday. You can flirt, you can do touching, you know. With seduction, you can do a lot of things to make a guy feel good without actually physically being with them. And that'll buy you time until they're like, oh my God, I want this so much. And then they'll, you know, drop stacks on you. So just keep that in mind. I know, you know, in other lines of work in adult entertainment, I suffer strippers. Strippers know how to do this. <laughs> I would know. I used to be one. They know how to get money from guys without doing shit. So, but everybody else feels like they need to give sex to get money. And you don't. You need to... Give attention, affection, good feelings, feel goods. That's what you need to give to these guys, especially if you're picking the right targets, which we'll talk about that when we're qualifying them. They need to be old, preferably overweight, <laughs> but old, overweight, and have money. Like the guys that most people run away from, that, that needs to be your target because a lot of girls want the young millionaires or the young billionaires because you know they still want the guy to look good or whatever that's not my target demographic and if that's yours then this video is probably not for you and i should also say that this is just my opinion you don't have to take it 
So please don't email me telling me how you can do this, this, and this. Either watch it or don't. I'm putting this out there to help the ladies that have asked for this video, so you don't have to watch it. But like I was saying, old, overweight, like something has to be physically wrong with them where they're not a 10 where girls are going to be chasing them because you don't want as much competition anyway. I mean, in the world of freestyling, there's not as much competition anyway because it takes confidence. It takes a lot of stuff. It's like with dancing too, with stripping. Not every girl can strip. A girl could be the most beautiful girl and still not make any money because she doesn't have confidence. She doesn't have her game plan. She doesn't have anything going for her but her looks. And an ugly girl will fucking take guys <laughs> to the VIP room all night. Trust me, I know. I remember when I first started dancing, there was this one girl in my club. And she was not cute. And not to talk down on any girl because I'm all girl power all day every day but if you are gonna look superficially and what would be the you know accepted or you know what do they call that the European standards of beauty she wasn't it she wasn't even regular standard of beauty her body looked like an amoeba, if you know anything about biology. Like she was not, she wasn't fat, but she just did not have a shape. She was flat chested, no ass. It was just not what you would think a stripper should be. But this girl stayed banking. Like I was just like, what the hell? And my club, I danced at like a really hoity toity club. Like they don't, there's none of this dick sucking in the back like girls are doing these days. <laughs> none of that shit. So we know she wasn't doing that, but it was just like game. So yeah, you have to have confidence about you to make it in freestyling, which is why this is like such an untapped market. And the girls that are good at it, they're just winning in life. And the girls that are not are complaining. So anyways, um, but yeah, no sex of any kind, including kissing until you get your payday. You can be as flirty when you reject him, like, ah, you know, as, uh, uh, Mich Michaela Pink that came on, uh, episode 59 said, what kind of girl do you think I am? Or now why do you think you deserve a kiss right now? Like flirty. Shut him down, but in a flirty, playful way, so that way you don't bruise his ego, but you're going to reject his advances all the same because he will most definitely make them. Because guys will always try you to see if they can get it easy. And once they get it easy, that's it. No more money for you. Say no to time wasters. <laughs> Okay, and a quick tip, do not wear any designer anything when you go out on dates with these men. They need to think that you have nothing. That's actually how I got my first designer bag bought for me when I was in college. Although I wasn't even thinking about it back then. But my guy, we were having lunch and he was like, oh, what brand of bag is that? And I was like, oh, it's no name brand. I got it at TJ Maxx. And his response was, Oh, we'll change that. Like he said it all like, I got you, boo. I wasn't really thinking anything of it. And then after lunch, he took me to Gucci and was like, pick out whatever you want. And I was like, what? <laughs> well, in my mind, of course, I wasn't like, what in person? But in my mind, I was like, oh my God, I don't hit it. Um, and he like stepped out to make a phone call. He gave the sales lady his credit card. Of course, she was excited too, because she's about to get that commission. She helped me pick out different stuff. And he didn't even look at the bill. That's how, that's big, big wallet energy. <laughs> he didn't look at a bill, but I mean, I didn't go crazy or anything, which is one thing he loved about me was that he spent more money than I did, which is true. Men of means are always going to overspend. They're going to outspend you because they're so used to dropping big money on like frivolous things. Cause at this point their money is making money. It doesn't matter. They can get whatever they want. Okay. Um, so yeah, when you go on your dates, you want your face to be beat to the gods. 
This needs to look good. This needs to be perfect. Minimal to no jewelry. Like you can wear like little, you know, zirks, cubic zirconia studs and maybe one little silver bracelet if you must. But the less you wear, the better when it comes to jewelry and, you know, designer wear. Because you want to look like pretty, but not perfect. Also, another tip, wear the same shoe for your first few dates. <laughs> You might end up getting a new pair. Happened to me too. <laughs> so like for your first three dates or so, wear the same shoes. Change your dress, of course. But wear the same shoes, but minimal stuff. No jewelry. Just earrings, but like really small, like just sterling silver, like basic shit. But this needs to look perfect. Lashes, all that. Lips popping. Highlighter, highlighter popping. Like, all of it. You definitely want this to be perfect. Everything else, I mean, and your dress needs to look great. But again, not designer. And everything else, just regular. Heels, of course, but not name brand. Or at least not name brand that he can tell. But usually, guys can tell the brands if they're men of means. So... Try to stay away from name brands if you can. I keep fucking with this hair, but it's getting on my nerves. Anyways, um, but yeah, the goal is to look good, but not perfect. Okay, so on to the nitty gritty. Places you can meet him during the day. So we're going to start with our first batch, which will be your errands and groceries. So Whole Foods, of course, you know, that's a high-end grocery store. And, you know, it's sister stores like Trader Joe's, Fresh Market, things of that nature. Because Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and these organic shops tend to place themselves strategically in affluent neighborhoods. So they're not dumb either. So if, if you see a Whole Foods somewhere, know that there is money around. I've done the research. <laughs> if you see a Whole Foods anywhere, that's literally in their business plan, is that they only open up stores in affluent neighborhoods. So keep that in mind. So Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Fresh Market, and, you know, depending on where you are in the United States, any other high-end grocery stores in affluent neighborhoods. Best Buy, you know, guys love their gadgets and the older guys tend to not really want to shop online for these things. They like to feel it. They like to talk to a salesperson. They want to be there in person when they buy their shit. So Best Buy, and that seems to be the only electronic store that lasted. Radio Shack got, went bye-bye. Um, Home Depot and Lowe's, you have guys that are real estate investors, they're landlords, they're millionaires, but they still like to do physical work for whatever reason. That's not really my demographic, but I thought I would throw that in there because money is money. My guys tend to hire people to do all their handiwork. They can still do stuff physically, but if they're doing it, it'll be for you. Like if you wanted them to like put up a shelf or something, they would happily do that because you know they get to show you that they're macho and manly men. But usually for the most part, they're busy. They'll probably just give you the money to hire somebody to do it. But Home Depot and Lowe's, you're going to have your millionaire landlords and, you know, real estate investors that go in or, you know, house flippers that go in there to get supplies or whatever, whatever. So that's another spot to meet someone. Your wine stores, upscale wine stores. Here in Miami, we have Total Wine and we have ABC Wine. Those are the two main, and I think South Florida, because it's like a big chain now. You know, because these guys are always entertaining. They're always having parties at their house, so they need to go buy cases of stuff, cases of champagne, cases of vodka, cases of, you get the picture, or for their boat, or whatever. They have to, you know, stock supplies, so they go get it. So, uh, wine stores, um, upscale liquor stores. Uh, and then upscale coffee shops or the Starbucks in an affluent neighborhood because, you know, Starbucks is a big brand. So if it's a nice neighborhood, if it's in a nice neighborhood, go there because now 
that Starbucks, because it wasn't publicly traded before, but now that it is, they're opening, it's now a franchise. So they're, because it used to be owned by one company and then they started being a franchise. <laughs> I did the research, but um, don't ask me why. But um, so now anybody with the right amount of money can open a Starbucks and it's not necessarily going to be in an affluent neighborhood. It's not like McDonald's. McDonald's can open up anywhere and they'll still make money because it's McDonald's. Starbucks, eh, not everybody is going to go to Starbucks. You have to put it where people are going to buy. Like college kids love their Frappuccinos and Mocha Choco, whatever. Those are not really my clientele. But in upscale neighborhoods, your, little, your CEO could hop in there real quick to pick up his coffee before he goes, although now they have drive through which kind of fucks up the whole thing. So not just Starbucks, upscale cafes, because you have your retirees that want to go in there in the morning and just kind of chill and get a cup of coffee. So that could be another place for you to go. Um, what else? So yeah, those are like your basic daytime errand stuff. This is for the girl that doesn't have money to spend at lunch or whatever. You, this is free. All you need is gas in your car. And you can drive around and, you know, plan it out. Try out different stores. So maybe today you'll be like, okay, I'm going to go to Lowe's and Home Depot. Or I'm going to go to Best Buy today or whatever. Plan your shit. And one thing you should know is that rich guys, affluent men, are creatures of habit. They tend to do the same thing daily even if they're in different parts of the world they have their routine so sometimes if you plan it right you can go to a place a few times a week and the same guys will keep seeing you because sometimes they like to watch you for a while and eventually they'll approach you that's happened to me where a guy was like oh i saw you came in here the other day blah blah and then you know i think like about the fourth or fifth time he finally had the balls to approach me i didn't even know he existed all you want to do is be on display, you know, and look good, and they will come to you. Um, what else? Of course, make sure your makeup, this has to be perfect. Your hair needs to be on point. I wouldn't wear this during the day because this is pretty glam glam. Like, I would wear a different wig when I'm running errands, but still long, still flowy, you know. This is more for you too. Honey bun. Um, make sure your makeup and your hair is on point. You can wear flats or wedges since it's daytime and it, it would make sense for you to be in flats or like wedges because nobody is like strutting around Best Buy in heels. Like you, time and place for everything. Um, I'm speaking to Miami, sun dresses all day because our weather is warm year round. But if you're in a cold climate, you already know what to do. Have your pea coat. You know, um, if you must wear pants, which I'm, I'm deeply against. Actually, I'm not even gonna say if you must wear. But don't wear pants. Wear boots. They have flat. They have flat boots or wedge boots. You can wear those, and you actually would get away with boots with heels because it's more subdued. You know, you can actually get away with that. in colder climates so just have a nice coat when the weather is um cold have a nice coat and nice shoes and you know of course make sure it still kind of shows your figure and when you get into the store take that thing off and sh show them what you're working with but uh for miami it's like dresses all day so it's not a big deal here um, okay, so for Whole Foods and any other grocery stores, make sure you go in the morning before 11 a.m. I mean, you can go at other times too, but I'm saying for the demographic that you're trying to reach, at least my demographic, which is the older guys, they're early risers. If they don't have somebody doing their shopping for them, they're going to be doing their shopping in the morning. They're grocery shopping in the morning. Yeah, maybe every now and then they might catch them in the afternoon. But these guys are busy. They got shit to do. You know, they're going to get grab all their groceries either early in the morning or late at night, but usually early in the morning before they go to their tea time for golf or 
go play tennis or go do whatever with their buddies or go to work, depending on what stage he is in his life. Because most guys never really retire all the way. They might semi-retire, but they never like fully retire. So go in the morning before 11 a.m. And you can also test it out again later in the evening, like after 7 p.m. or something like that, in case maybe they wanted to grab something the night before so they didn't have to do it in the morning. But more than likely, they probably have somebody shopping for them, but every now and then you might get a little stray, <laughs> as I call them. They might stray away and go do something themselves because, you know, their maid is sick or whatever. So keep that in mind. Uh, same thing with the coffee shop, of course. Go in the morning. I mean, I know there are people at Starbucks and other cafes at all times of days, but those people are usually students or whatever, like the guys with shit to do. That's usually like their morning routine. They go get their coffee and then they move on. They're usually not getting coffee in the middle of the day. If they are, their assistant is probably grabbing it for them. But go in the morning before 11 a.m. For all the other locations I mentioned, go from late morning to mid-afternoon. So your Lowe's, Best Buy, and stuff like that, that's when you would go there. Um, and like I said, this works for the ladies that don't have the money to spend at restaurants, which I'm going to talk about next. So just plan your day, get dolled up, hop in your car, and go to these places to meet your guy without having to break the bank. Um, and then, you know, when you're at the store, if you see somebody that you feel like is a potential, you can ask them questions. This is the one place I would say you can actually talk to the guy first. You know, you can say stuff like, if you're at the wine store, which I've done this before, um, do you know what the difference is between mezcal and tequila or some bullshit? Like, even if you knew the answer, just ask them some question or, you know, where where would you get somebody or what would you get somebody who was into local brewed beers? And then this gives them a chance to shine because, of course, they're going to tell you everything they know about the freaking topic. Or like, oh, um, my girlfriend is having a housewarming and I'm thinking about getting her some wine. What do you recommend? Like bullshit like that. At the grocery store, same thing, because most grocery stores have wine selections. But if you catch him not in the wine selection, ask, make up a question on the spot. Like, you have to really be able to think on the spot. Like, oh, my God, have you tried this um, flavor of whatever before? Like, ask a question. And it wouldn't look like you're being forward or trying to hit on them. It'll look like you're actually asking a question. But then they're going to notice that you're pretty. And if they like you. They'll ask for your number. I mean, I've had guys legit just come up to me and ask me for my number in the grocery store. And that's one thing you should know. Men of means are not shy. They will make a move unless you look scary and they think you're going to reject them. But for the most part, they will make a move. Um, okay, so the next wonderful place um, would be for lunchtime and happy hour outings. Um, again, only in affluent neighborhoods. At lunch, you might catch the retiree or the power exec. Don't limit yourself, though, to standalone restaurants, which are, all, which are great, because all you can do there is eat and drink. But don't limit yourself to those alone. Resorts, country clubs, especially here in Miami, there are a bunch of those. There are hotels that also have country clubs or whatever. Like, they're mixed-use properties, um, hotels, hotel restaurants work as well. And the beautiful thing about daytime freestyling is that no one will ever suspect you of being a heel <laughs> unless, you know, you're like ass out, titties out, six inch heels, looking like a stripper, then yes, they will suspect you of being one. But if you dress nicely, but still look good, no one would ever suspect you because you're just going to look like a sweet, innocent, pretty lady, you know? So that's one of the beautiful things about daytime freestyling, in addition to them not even knowing what hit them because they think they met you by chance. Okay, so with lunch, make sure you're wearing heels, though. 
because you're not walking anywhere. You're going from your car or your Uber straight to the restaurant. So wear heels. And of course, sashay in there, walk in with confidence. You know, this is, this is your runway. This is time to strut your stuff. So walk in there with confidence. Always sit at the bar, of course. Um, and so lunch, lunchtime hours will be from about 11.30 a.m., which is kind of early to me, but that's usually when lunch officially starts, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. If he stays past 1 p.m. to talk to you, then you know he answers to no one and he's, he's, he's his own boss. So that's a good sign. Um, you probably want to get there like around 12.30 because that will weed out the people that need to hurry up and eat to get back to work by 1, 1.30 whereas you're going to stroll in there casually to have your meal at 12:30. Um for happy hour is from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Make sure you leave at 7 p.m. I don't care if you found your whale and you guys hit it off and you're having a great time, exchange numbers, tell him you have to head home because you have an early morning. Not only will it make him want you more because you just cut off your interaction Remember, this is long term. <laughs> if it was short term, of course, I would say stay and make your bad girl. But this is long term. So he needs to know you have a life. You have things to do. You're not just out there looking for someone. Because when you have time restraints, that means you got shit to do. Exchange numbers and be about your way. Do not stay past 7 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Be in and out. And, you know, that's the one thing about freestyling during the day is that you can be home before it gets super dark outside and you have accomplished so much. And, of course, one thing I would advise you is to make friends with the bar staff. They are your friend. Tip them well. They can tell you about certain people at the bar, especially the high rollers, because they know, they know what the deal is, you know, and they love the banter. And it makes you look like you're popular and everybody wants to talk to who is popular when you walk in and the bartenders know who you are. But I've had some of my bartender friends be like, oh girl, that dude comes in here all the time and he's just blood, he's broke, because they know what I like. <laughs> And they'll be like, girl, he's not even it. He comes in here all the time and he's a mess. So they'll give you the tea. But you need to be friendly to them, smile, ask them, oh, what do you recommend? Even though you already know what you want. Be interactive. Don't just like shrink behind the bar and, you know, just sit there. Because then people are going to think that you're desperate, you don't have confidence, and you will repel everyone. So the minute you walk in, smile at the bartender. Smile. I'm not saying wear a permanent smile on your face, but, you know, if you're talking to the bartender, you naturally will be smiling and looking lively. So make friends with them. You know, that way when people walk in, they see you laughing and having fun, they're going to be like, oh, who is that girl? I want to talk to her. This has happened to me many times where I'm just like the place could be dead and I'm just I'm there to eat and drink and have fun anyway. And, you know, I'll happened on somebody who walked in and was like, oh, they they thought they were going to walk in and walk out. But then they see me chit-chatting with the bartender and they're like, oh, what are you guys up to? And they'll come and start talking. So make friends with the bar staff. That's, they're your friend. And also, it would behoove you to know what your career is going to be when you're asked. So many girls struggle with this. Especially, yes. I personally have been using receptionist. Shout out to Shira7 for that recommendation. I mean, I've used different things in the past too. But the receptionist is working because I can be a receptionist at a doctor's office one day. And then the next day, it could be at a hair salon or whatever. But the key is, whatever your job is, Make sure you're poor, but it has to be glamorous. So you can't say you work at a toll booth because that's not a glamorous job. You know, you can say you're 
whatever, but you have to be poor <laughs> and glamorous. Those, those are your two key things. Um, and of course, another beautiful thing about daytime freestyling is that if one of your regulars call you for a last minute appointment, which they all seem to do when you decide to make plans, I'm sure I'm not the only one <laughs> that deals with this, all of a sudden they want to hang out when you've beat your face and you're getting ready to step out of the house. Hey, are you available at this time? Which is good. You can run back, make your money real quick and go back out, you know, and you'll be looking extra good. And he'll also be more hooked because he'll be like, oh, damn, you look good. Because I know there are some ladies that get lazy and slack off with their regulars in the makeup department and don't think your clients don't notice. They do. They do. But anyways, I think that's about it. Um, I might also do like a fashion tips episode, like what to wear when you're going out. But if you do join the show's Patreon for only a dollar a month, patreon.com slash T-S-E-G-P, you will see some past videos that I've done of examples of what to wear when you're freestyling. So that's already on there. Also, if you're stomped on places to go in your particular location, I'm going to start a post under this video in the show's Patreon page, and you can respond with your zip code, and I will tell you some great places to go based on your location. Because sometimes girls get, you know, oh my God, where do I go? This is another thing you can get by joining the show's Patreon page. It's just a dollar a month. The money goes to my admin stuff. Like I'm not like charging anyone an arm and a leg because I actually am doing this as an educational piece. So join and you can get a little bit more of the perks. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can email them to me at Vivian at TSEGP.com and I will answer them on my next live or my next video, however the spirit moves me. If it, if it relates to the video, otherwise I'll do it on the next live. But let's chat later. Bye-bye.